In this video, I'm going to take a look at the TK Inter menu widget, and I'm going to see how we can add a very simple menu to a window in Python. Let's consider this computer program, and if we look to the first line here, this is the way that I recommend you import TK Inter into the programs that you're writing. And if you remember, this approach was to avoid naming conflicts, which means when I now wish to create a window or a widget that is a widget defined in TK Inter, I have to use these two letters here every time I wish to create either the window or a widget to be added to that window. Now this can be seen on this line and you can see that I am binding this name my underscore window to an instance of a TK Inter window. This refers to the class that's going to be the basis for the object that's created and of course I have to put TK in front of it with this full stop and this means when I look at this line I know I'm dealing with TK Inter because I can see this TK appearing here. So this line is going to create an instance of the TK class which means we're going to have a window created. And I'm going to arrange for the code to add a menu to this window. And we would regard the window then as being the container, the container that contained the menu that I'm going to show you how to add to this window in a moment. So let's consider this line. And you can see here that I'm using TK in the full stop again. That allows me to ensure that I have very little chance of a naming conflict within my code. And here you can see I've got the name of the widget, the menu widget, or the menu class that's been defined in TK Enter. And if you look here, you can see what I'm passing is my underscore window, which is the window that was created on this line. So passing this window name in here, the name of the object that I created on this line, to this means that the menu knows it's going to be contained within this window that was created on this line. And just to remind you, this is the name bound to the instance of the window that this bit of the code created. So the menu that's created on this line will be bound to this name. So, so far with these two lines of code, I've created an instance of the window here, which is bound to this name. And here I've created an instance of a menu that's bound to this name. And this window will be the container for this menu. So this line has created the menu, but we haven't said what the menu is going to look like. That's where this line comes into play. You can see we're referring to the menu again, and this line is a message to that menu to that instance of the menu class to that widget and we're invoking in that instance of the menu class of the menu widget this method to this named argument the string quit is passed now this here is being defined inside this which in turn is defined inside TK Inter, and it's waiting to be passed something by you as the programmer, a string that will be added to the look of the menu, and we'll see what this gives us in a moment. Now this line is a message to this instance of the window, and it's going to invoke this method, and we pass to this method my underscore menu, which is the menu that was formed using these two lines here. And of of course we can see that that has been assigned to menu now menu will be a named formal parameter within this method waiting to receive information about the menu that it is to add to this window and of course the menu it is to add to this window is this one here which you can see were created using these two lines this created the menu and this here added to that menu what we're going to have a look at in a moment and then of course like all tk into programs we go into a main loop which i won't discuss here so when this program executes we're going to create the window and you can see here this is the window that's being created and on this line we're going to create the menu and the menu is going to be contained within this window and what this line is doing it's adding this label quit to the menu that we add to the window on this line and if you look here you can see there you have the quit 
So let's consider the program from the beginning. This allows us to use TKinter. This creates the window. This creates the menu. And we haven't set up what the look of that menu is like yet. That's what this line does. It sets what's part of the menu, which we can see in this case is just the quit. And what this does, it configures the window by adding the menu to the window. And you can see that menu is here. And of course, we go into the main event loop here. You using this line of code. Of course, the reason I've put quit here as a menu is I want, when I click onto that for the application, which in this case is just obviously the window being shown, to quit. So let's come across here and let's click on that and you can see it doesn't go away. It doesn't quit. Now the reason for that is if you look at this code, all I have done is set up what the menu will look like. I haven't added any code that will respond to me clicking on this menu menu item as you can see I'm doing here now nothing is happening so that's what the next bit of the program is going to look at so let's consider the program we've just been discussing and going to look at this line and what it is doing it's making the menu have this as part of the menu but if you look in the brackets here there's nothing else and what we have to do we have to put in here what happens when you click on the quit that appears in the menu and we'll do that with the next program on the next slide now here's the computer program and let's look straight to this line here and if you remember a moment ago all we had in these brackets was this but now you can see I've put a comma and I've added this I've put the word command and I'm saying that is being assigned this quit underscore app where that quit underscore app is this function here. And of course, I've been responsible for adding this function to the code. And if you look at the name of the function here, you can see that it's quit underscore app and that's what appears here. So what this line does, it makes the menu look like something that has quit. And when you click on that quit when the program is running, it causes this function here to execute. So this bit says, right, the command is that you execute this when the user clicks on the menu item that has this string quit in it. That means this will execute. And if you have a look at the code inside this function, you can see I'm referring to the window, which was produced on this line. And you can see there's the name, and this is the name in my function and I'm calling this method. So this is a message to this window telling it to destroy itself. Now there's other things I would have to do here if I wanted to make this a more robust piece of code. But what will happen here is the application will effectively end when I click on the menu item quit. So let's have a look at that working. So here we can see the runtime for the program and we can see here we have the menu quit so if I come along to here now and click on it you can see that it indeed disappears so to summarize this imports TK into so we can use its facilities this is a function that I've been responsible for producing which will allow for this window here to be destroyed this is where we create the instance of the window this is where we create the menu which has nothing forming it at the moment but we can see on this line that the menu is created and it's going to be contained by this window where this window is the container of the menu this forms the look by putting quit to be one of the labels inside the menu and this here is saying if the user were to click onto this label i want you to execute this function which has been written here and of course what this is doing it's configuring the window by passing into this named parameter this where this my underscore menu is the menu that was created on this line and had its look set here together with how it's going to respond to the user clicking on it which is what this bit of the code will do do and of course then we go here and we go into the main loop and now the program which you can see running here is waiting for the user to do something of course the user can come along to here now click on the quit and of course that will cause this bit of the code to execute because we're dealing with an event driven program now and the window will be 
destroyed. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.